Hey guys, what's up? It's GamerGuy7Aces here. And alright, we've gotten a lot of Sonic news in the past month of this year. It's been a lot. I know things have died down a bit, but there's a lot of great Sonic stuff coming out this year. We got the Knuckle Show coming out in April. You know, Sonic Movie 3 coming out the end of the year, December. And let's not forget, Sonic X Shadow Generations. And I'm going to talk about all of that. Yo, this looks like it's going to be the most solid year of Sonic since... 2011 when the original generations came out and what i mean solid is that everything is high quality there's nothing that's mid because ever since sonic has you know had a resurgence back there's always been at least one thing that's been mid uh you know after the sonic movie came out in 2020 2021 colors ultimate of course that was terrible uh 2022 we had Origins and Frontiers. Origins was kind of lackluster as the remaster. And let's not forget the drama between uh, Stealth, uh, Christian Whitehead's old team, and Sega. And then 2023, last year, we had Superstars or Super Mid. But this year, looks like everything is going to be high quality. So let's get into it. But before I do, be sure to smash that like button, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. All right, so as you know, I only post like one to two videos per month, so I owe you guys a video for this month, and uh, I definitely want to talk about the Generations Remaster and Sonic Movie 3. I can't wait to cover the Knuckles show, though, when that comes out in April. Let's talk about Sonic X Shadow Generations. Now, I haven't made a video about this remaster so far. I mean, if you guys check out my community posts, you know that I've been writing about it a lot, but I actually have not talked about it yet, so... You know, now that I'm a little bit free now, I can talk about it because I've been wanting to talk about this game. Now, as some of you guys know, my OG subscribers, Sonic Generations was the game that made me want to start my YouTube channel. Like, I think I would have eventually started a YouTube channel anyway, but Sonic Generations was definitely the push for me to start my channel. Now, it's true, when I first started my channel, I wasn't a Sonic tuber first. I was doing a lot of gaming walkthroughs, mostly on LEGO games and a few Sonic games. But it was the LEGO and Spider-Man games that put my channel on the map. But the main reason why I couldn't play Generations was because I didn't have capture systems for consoles or the 3DS at the time. So it was kind of hard to do that. So fast forward now, almost feels like my channel cannot come into a full circle until I cover Sonic X Shadow Generations because this was the game that made me want to start my channel in the first place. Now, also, I can't believe that I almost accurately predicted this game a couple of years ago because I made a community post saying that I was really on that profit guy timing back then because this was posted September 30th, 2021, over two years ago, arguably three years ago. Now, at the time, I was thinking Sonic Generations Ultimate or the Sonic Generations Remaster would not happen because Azuka and Sega said that they are watching to see how Sonic Colors Ultimate performs well before they move forward with another remaster. And because Colors Ultimate did so badly, I was like, okay, they're not gonna do a Generations remaster. And then on the thumbnail, I also put Shadow the Hedgehog too because from this time, since that time, I knew Sega wanted to make a Shadow the Hedgehog game. I forgot where I heard it from. It's some article. I might link it in the description below if I find it. But Azuka always wanted to make another Shadow-focused game. Not necessarily a sequel to Shadow the Hedgehog because that was a very controversial game. And a lot of people didn't like it. Got a lot of mixed reviews. But Azuka's been wanting to make a Shadow game. So, they finally did, but since it wasn't that long of a game, they decided to combine it with Sonic Generation. So that's really cool, and this is 2021. No one else was really talking about this, but I just put the pieces together and I predicted this. And honestly, I think if this game does well, they will go back to Unleash and remaster that as well. I don't know how they're going to remaster it, especially with the Werehog, but I'm pretty sure they'll figure it out. Now, what do I feel about this remaster? I honestly believe this remaster will be better than Colors Ultimate. Here's why. Because Sega is finally going by this policy. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Literally. You know, Sega knows they can't afford another L with this remaster. I know they don't have the greatest track record when it comes to Sonic remasters, like at all, from Sonic Adventure DX to Sonic Genesis, Sonic Colors Ultimate, the list goes on. But they know that they can't afford with this because this game is supposed to bring a lot of fans, Sonic movie fans especially, 
to watch Sonic Movie 3 and also play this game because Shadow's in it is really to market the movie, Sonic Movie 3. Matter of fact, my workplace, and I work in a hospital, one of my coworkers asked me, he found out I was a Sonic fan. He's also a big Sonic fan. He said, hey, do you know about Sonic X Shadow Generations coming out? A lot of casuals are looking forward to this game. Generations was quite a big game when it came out, you know? So Sega knows they can't afford an L with this. They ruined Color's Legacy. And I personally don't care because although I really enjoyed and really, really liked Sonic Colors, I didn't want that, not aesthetic, but I didn't want that type of level gameplay design to be copied for several games in the future. And that's what Sega's been doing. Sonic Forces level design is literally ripped, inspired by Sonic Colors, but it only worked for Sonic Colors because of the Wisps and it didn't work in future games like Sonic Forces. It's just the level design was bad. It was even worse because just most of the level design was lacking. It was a straight line. Let's talk about the engine thing. This is how I know that Generations will be a solid remaster. Like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix. Sega's literally not going to do anything to the original Generations. You know, this will basically be like Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Theory to a T. Now remember that game, 3D World. I enjoy the original 3D World, but if you play the remaster, there's not much of a difference. It's really an enhanced port, you know, with a few differences in speed and, um, you know, some quality of life updates, like you can collect a green star and if you die, you still collected it. You don't have to go back and collect it again. Just those little tweaks to make the game a better experience, but it's a much faster and polished game than the original 3D world. Now, I don't think Generations is going to have that much of enhancement. I think it's really going to be more of an enhanced port than even a remaster. And I know both of them are pretty much the same. An enhanced port is basically a straight port of a game, just enhanced, upscaled, some quality of life things added to it. A remaster is basically remastering the game's graphics and everything. So I think Sonic Generations is going to be a mixture of a remaster and an enhanced port. Now, why is Sega doing this? Why are they not going to add more things or more levels to Sonic Generations? It's simply because they don't have the physics engine anymore for Generations. Now, I know some of you guys are thinking, wait, Gamer Guard, are you talking about the Hedgehog Engine 1 and Hedgehog Engine 2? I'm not talking about that. See, a lot of people keep on mixing up the Hedgehog Engine and think that, you know, represents the physics. No, Hedgehog Engine is just the graphics engine. Has nothing to do with physics. Physics was Havoc Engine, so Sonic Unleashed, even Sonic Forces, Sonic Generations all use the Havoc's physics engine. And if you look at this list here of all the Sonic games that have been using Havoc's physics engine, it's uh, Sonic Forces, Sonic Generations, Sonic Lost World, Sonic Rider Zero Gravity, Sonic 06, and Sonic Unleashed. So if you guys notice, Sonic Frontiers does not use the Havoc physics engine at all. Sega has discontinued that. So since they discontinued that, they can't really go back and add to generations or add things in it because it's not going to play the same as generations at all it will be quite jarring so it's kind of like generations is a relic of its time now it can never be replicated now i know some of you guys are like but what about mods that's different those are mods sega's not about to mod generations for us like what well, and if you look at frontiers the engines that they use for frontiers is uh cryware although they've used cryware for a lot of sonic games but they also use install OD, Quixel, Megascans, and Speedtree. Now, I looked these up. Speedtree deals with a lot of the foliage and the, you know, the grass and the trees to make it look very realistic. That's how we got the Starfall Islands. Same thing as install OD. Just look those up. A lot of those engines were for, you know, making Sonic Frontiers look the way it does. And I think Quixel Megascans was like the physics engine. But yeah, I'm not a huge expert on engines and and how they work and all that. But if you see here, Havoc isn't in this list at all. So when they went to remaster Sonic Generations and make it Sonic and Shadow Generations, they couldn't go back and, you know, add things to Generations, even if they wanted to. And they're like, we don't want to mess this up. Let's just upscale it, remaster it, make it an enhanced port instead of a straight port and then add shadow generations which does use all the updated you know physics engine and also the hedgehog engine too so that's why it looks different obviously graphically it's going to be different and better looking than generations since that was hedgehog engine one we use hedgehog engine two 
So this is why Sega is not going to tamper with the original generations besides upscaling, remastering it, and enhancing the port. That's all. So it's basically going to be like Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. Uh, and that's why Shadow Generations look slightly different, and I know it'll feel slightly different as well when you play it. But yeah, also, let's talk about Sonic Movie 3. Now, a lot of the casting for this movie has happened lately, uh, including the actress who's going to play Maria. I haven't covered any of them, honestly. And uh, yeah, the actress who plays Maria, you know, she's been getting into the Sonic games a lot. You know, and uh, she said that she's played Sonic Forces and all that, unfortunately. And other people are giving her, like, recommendations of what games to play. So, I think, I don't know if someone's told her this yet, but any casual who wants to play a Sonic game or any noob who wants to get into the Sonic franchise, I would recommend these games to them. I would recommend them Sonic Mania, Sonic Generations. Like, those are the top two games because those games celebrate Sonic's history. Sonic Mania celebrates all his classic history. Sonic Generations does it for classic and modern. So, those are easy games to get into. Then if they like the classic side of Sonic more, then I'll introduce them to Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you know, the Holy Grail, Sonic 2, CD, and all that. And then if they like the modern Sonic more, then I can introduce them to, like, maybe Sonic Frontiers, or, you know, see what they feel about Unleashed. And especially the adventure games, they'll have to play Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. But yeah, also, uh, Christian Ritter, who's an actress... A lot of people thought she was going to voice Rouge the Bat in Sonic Movie 3, but she's not going to play any Sonic Anthropomorph character. She's going to play human. <laughs> so I think she's going to be part of Gun or something. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it's kind of disappointing to people because they all were expecting her to play Rouge since she kind of has that sassy voice, sassy, sultry voice. So it's got me thinking, will Amy and Rouge even be in this movie? I think so. I think at least one of them is going to be in the movie and it has to be amy rose amy is more important than rouge i mean look amy has had more appearances than rouge she is the first female sonic character and like sonic adventure 2 storyline just won't work without her because she's the one that changed shadow that helped shadow you know become good and help him remember what maria told him rouge could be played by anyone honestly it doesn't even have to be an anthropomorph it could be a human character that's a double spy, you know, or something like that. So I would like Rouge, but I don't want them to butcher her, especially that she's kind of a fan service type of character. And I did not like how Rouge was portrayed at all in Sonic Prime. So yeah, I would rather just not have Rouge at all if they're not going to do her right. But Amy has to be in the movie. I don't know why some people wanted to have Rouge besides Amy. It's like, nah, Amy is important. Most people know her. Amy was in Sonic Frontiers. Why wouldn't she be in this game? Amy has been promoted... In so many Sonic games over the past couple years, she's gotten a lot of exposure. So it would be kind of weird for Paramount to just ignore her and go to Rouge. And speaking of replacing characters, will Bio-Lizard even be in this movie? Now, Bio-Lizard is extremely essential to Shadow's storyline, his arc, and Sonic Adventure 2. But they could replace Bio-Lizard with Metal Sonic. Hear me out. I know a lot of people are like, what? That's blasphemy. But for a cinematic story point of view, that makes sense. Shadow's supposed to be the ultimate life form, right? Okay, let's say Joe Robotnik was making an ultimate life form and it was a more of a robotic hedgehog. And that's a prototype. And he was like, nah, I need to make more of an organic hedgehog. And, you know, using alien DNA and all that shit. And then comes up with Shadow. To be honest, that makes more logical sense than Biolizard. Biolizard was always like out there because it's like, how did you go from that that big deformed lizard thing to shadow it never made sense so yeah from a movie standpoint i can see how they would incorporate metal sonic because we're going to be three movies in and we still haven't gotten any metal sonic and i remember metal sonic was supposed to be in movie two but they cut him out because there wasn't enough room to put metal sonic and they didn't want to just you know rush him in the end or in the third act so they instead just stuck with the death egg robot or the giant eggman robot which you know was much better so i mean it could work i know a lot of people will be upset they don't see bio lizard but me personally the movies aren't the games so if they have metal sonic be the ultimate life form prototype that shadow fights and then he becomes like huge metal overlord instead of uh you know um final hazard i can see it working you know after all sonic movie 2 combined both sonic the hedgehog 2 and sonic 3 and knuckles 
So this could also combine Sonic Adventure 2 with Sonic Heroes, Sonic Adventure 1, all that stuff. Also, the CGI for BioLizard is going to be crazy because this is basically a Godzilla type of character. Now, I'm not saying Paramount can't afford to do BioLizard CGI, but it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to do. It's going to be a lot of money to get the visuals looking right. So the budget is going to be very high. Whereas Metal Sonic, it won't be as high until he becomes like, you know, Metal Overlord and stuff like that. But I think having Metal Overlord is still not as challenging, visually speaking, than BioLizard or Final Hazard because a lot's going on there and they have to make it look grotesque and stuff too. And you know, these Sonic movies have been very Robotnik centric so far. You know, Robotnik has always been the villain um, in every movie. Now we know that's not going to be the case for this arc because Robotnik teams up with Sonic and friends. But to have it be a Metal Sonic type character, which is a creation of the Robotnik family, seems more like the story is going full circle than having it be Bio Lizard, which is completely out of left field. But we will see. I'm just going off a hunch. You know, I, I didn't get any leaks, no insider information on this. It's just what I'm thinking. Either we're going to get Bio Lizard or we're going to get Metal Sonic or both. But there's a lot that they have to fit in this movie. You know, the shadow amy you know a lot of stuff uh bio lizard so i hope they can balance everything well but what do you guys think about all this let me know down in the comments below uh what do you think about sonic movie 3 do you think amy is going to be in the movie still do you think it's going to be only rouge or do you think both of them are still going to make it in the movie also bio lizard do you think bio lizard can be replaced by metal sonic do you think he should be replaced by metal sonic or do you think that's a bad idea and will completely mess up the canon or whatever let me know and also, Sonic X Shadow Generations, what do you think about the game? The remaster, do you think Sega's still going to add some things to the original generations? Or they're just going to make it a straight remaster? Alright guys, that's all I have for now, so take care. And until next time, I'm out.